Hi, I'm Cliff Sadoff, Extension Specialist at Purdue University. In this video, we will talk about borers and how to manage them. Boring insects feed inside plant stems, branches, or trunks. They can kill plants by destroying the vascular system that provides water and nutrients. But before we talk about borers, let's review the anatomy of a tree trunk. At the center of a tree is the heartwood. This is made up of old xylem and it provides structural support for the tree. The next layer out is the sapwood, which is made up of young xylem, which can actively conduct water, fertilizer, and pesticides from the roots of the tree to the canopy. The next layer out is the cambium cell layer. This is the layer of tissue that makes new xylem and new phloem. And the phloem is what is inside of the inner bark, and that is what conducts sugar and amino acids from the canopy down to the roots that helps the plants grow. And finally, on the outside of the tree is the outer bark. It's a waterproof protective layer made of old phloem. Borers help keep forests healthy by killing weakened trees and starting the decomposition process that breaks them down into soil. As such, borers often attack trees that are stressed by mechanical injury, lack of water, or excessive heat. For this reason, watering trees in the landscape during drought and proper mulching is probably one of the best strategies for protecting your trees from borers. Plants attacked by borers often have wilted leaves or they may start dying from the top down. Because these symptoms may also be caused by other factors, it is important to recognize the signs associated with borers. Sawdust is a sign that borers have been active. Here you can see a wilted impatience that has been attacked by a European corn borer caterpillar. When you split the stem, you can see where the borer has chewed and left excrement pellets or frass. These pellets are also visible where the borer exited from the stem. The location of the frass can help you identify your borer. For example, this pile of frass at the base of the tree is typical of a tulip tree root collar borer. In contrast, frass sticks coming out of a trunk are typical of an ambrosia beetle. Dogwood borers will chew round holes midway up the trunk and leave behind brown pupil skins and frass. The cracked sloughing bark is also associated with borer injury. Perhaps the most striking example of borers on trees is the emerald ash borer. I'm standing in front of an ash tree over here that is showing some of the classic symptoms. The top of the tree is dead. Uh, because the borer uh, will feed underneath the bark and cut off the circulation, causing the top part of the tree to dry out and die. And then once that dies, we start seeing uh, shoots, uh, these green sprouts, sometimes called water sprouts or epicormic sprouts. Uh, they'll come out, and this is the tree's last gasp. This adult female emerald ash borer is laying eggs in the cracks and crevices of a live ash tree trunk. Eggs hatch into larvae that bore beneath the bark to produce zigzag galleries that get progressively bigger as they feed and grow. After completing development to adults beneath the bark, they make a D-shaped exit hole as they exit the trunk. Adult beetles must feed on leaves to mature their eggs. Early symptoms of this borer include bark splitting, where the dead part of the trunk is no longer able to produce new bark. Woodpeckers leave telltale signs of beak holes and flecks of bark while searching to feed on borers. The bronze birch borer is a close relative of emerald ash borer and has a similar life cycle, feeding on leaves as an adult and making zigzag galleries beneath the bark that you can see on the surface. Contact insecticides can be applied to the trunk of a tree to kill adults or larvae chewing into the outer bark on their way into or out of the trunk. Systemic insecticides applied to the base of the tree that goes and penetrates the active sapwood will kill larvae feeding on phloem, cambium, or sapwood. There is no insecticide that you can apply to a tree that will reach the heartwood. So it's very important to follow the management guidelines for each particular borer in order to get effective control with insecticides. To drive home this point, here you can see where a longhorn beetle has chewed a hole into the bark to lay an egg that hatched into a larva that feeds on the phloem, 
cambium, and sapwood. Contact insecticide applied to the trunk would kill the adult. Systemic insecticide could kill the larva. In contrast, the larva can feed on the heartwood of the tree when the systemic insecticide has been applied because the pesticide did not reach this area. The systemic insecticide can still kill the insect on its way out as it chews through the sapwood if there is enough residue in the tissue. You can use the Purdue Plant Doctor webpage available at purdueplantdoctor.com to look up information on any particular kind of borer that you're interested in. So you would just simply type the word borer and select the borer from the drop-down list. Alternatively, if you had a tree that you thought had a borer, for example, a maple, you could simply type uh, maple, select maple from the drop-down menu and look on trunk to get images of problems on the trunk. And you could, if you saw uh, some weeping on uh, the side of a trunk, you might uh, click this photo to get a, a, a better image and get some more details. And uh, this is actually a sun scald or southwest injury. And you can see it says cracks and barks and sun sunken areas, but there are indeed no holes. So you could look under a uh, lookalike, uh, say a flat-headed apple tree borer, and there you might see something that might approximate what you would see out in the field. So example, you might see this broken bark with these galleries uh, over here. So I'm going to close this image up and you can get details uh, such a, about the biology as well as management recommendations, which tells you what kinds of insecticides that you can use and when you could use them. And then you can take your list of effective pesticides with you to the store. So please be sure to visit our Plant Doctor webpage and don't let your plant problems get you down.